Thanks to Road Mike, you don't have as much background sound with the music. It is a noisy event. It's very noisy. You're listening to something completely differently than what we are listening to. We are struggling to talk to each other. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Mike'd Up with Michelangelo. And today's guest is a very, very special guest, very close to me. Um, an amazing brother, father, friend, a really talented actor. You've seen him in John Q, Crash, a bunch of other movies and shows like Friends. Extremely talented actor. One of the best to ever hit the stage or hit the screen. Um, and one of my big brothers, my close to my heart, and that's going to be Daniel E. Smith. Come on, he's inside waiting for us right now. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going? Hey, man. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having hey, me. Bro. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Coming on. Yeah, no so, I don't know if you watched any of the episodes. If you read anything, um, you know you're all uh, mic'd up with Michelangelo. Okay. And you're mic'd up, Daniel. So we're here. Yep. Yep. I brought you some El Cristiano tequila. You want to do a little shot before we start? No, nah, you know, I, I, I can't right now. I'm what are you doing? Ramadan right now. Ramadan. Yeah, I'm not, you know, Muslim, but I'm supporting a friend, so. Okay. What's that going for you? Uh, you know, a little, little woozy right now, but I'm good. Okay. Good. What's, a light what's, what does... What does I'm doing Ramadan entail? Uh, so basically what I got, the information was, uh, you know, we can't eat or drink anything from the moment the sun rises until the moment the sun goes down. So basically fasting. You're not eating or drinking anything uh, for, I'm guessing, about 12 to 14 hours, depending on the weather and where you're at and what time the sun goes up and the sun goes down. Okay. Yeah. So no, no food. No, no water, no drinks, no nothing. nothing. Um, you're you're not praying though, because you're not. Praying. I'm not praying, no. no. Yeah. But we know Minhal is praying. Minhal is definitely. Our friend who you're supporting. I would hope he's praying because <laughs> he's praying for <laughs> both of you. Yes, because you need it. <laughs> I need it. I need the strength. Please. Okay. All right. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right. So let's get right into it. So we talked about you and being the, one of the most talented actors out there. Been okay. been in the industry for over twenty plus years. Yeah. You've worked with some of the greatest of the greatest and known to be the greatest yes. yeah. um, and you've done movies from you've done everything from stage yeah. to movies to yeah. feature films mm -hmm. to honestly a oscar worthy performance <laughs> in an oscar worthy uh movie if he didn't drop a movie the exact same year i believe training day training day yeah. I believe he would have won a movie for John Q. And of course, we're talking about Denzel Washington. Yeah. Because you played the little boy in John Q. His son. His yeah. son. Um, so tell me, let's go into that. What was that like at such a young age? Did you even did you even understand what you were getting yourself into at the time? Part partly, not of course now as an adult, fully full circle moment understanding right. the, you know the the depth and importance of it but at that time uh i did understand it somewhat uh for a child as much as i could i knew who he was i knew the people i was working with were heavy quote unquote heavy you know heavy superstars in the business um but for me at the time it was just fun it was it was something i enjoyed to do it was something i enjoyed doing i loved doing i was passionate about it acting and then they made it that much better too you know they were actually really cool they're people at the end of the day. I know these big superstar actors, but they're genuine people at the end of the day that, you know, love to laugh and talk about things. And like I said, they were people, they're these big giant superstars, but they're people at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, they connected with me. They made it fun. We had a good time filming. Uh, we were up in Canada, Toronto for three and a half months. Um, that's where we filmed it. And, you know, we all just got super close as family and friends and um, made really strong, cool relationships and nice. had a great time. Was this, was that like, an entire plan for you when you booked that movie? Were you full fledged going, I want to be an actor and I want to be in a movie and I want to have this a career as an actor and I want to pursue this? Um, were you auditioning a lot? What, what exactly got you to the point where you're sitting? I mean, back then compared to it is now, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they make them jokes where movie stars are movie stars, but now it's on the TV screen also because of Netflix. Yeah. Um, but so yeah. like there was like I was saying is, you know, back then getting a feature film was humongous. Yes. Definitely. Um, way bigger than what it is now. Life changing. Life changing. Yeah. Um, everybody's gonna see it and it and it seems so 
unreachable and so unattainable. Yeah, definitely. So it was that, I mean, we're 10 years old. You must, 10 years old in the movie. Yeah. So you booked it at what, eight, nine? Because you had to start, you filmed all to nine. Yeah, so by the time I, I auditioned, I was eight years old. Okay. I didn't book it till I turned nine. I didn't start filming till I turned 10. And it released when you were when I was twelve, <laughs> right? So Which that was doesn't the whole, happen like that anymore. Now it's all in the in everything the within months. four months, three months. You in outbound, it's yeah. there. Um, so yeah, that was the whole process. Once I had booked it, it was definitely you know the wheels started turning. It was more projects, more auditioning, more film and TV to just coming in, and that was the idea. That was like okay, now the wheels are turning, the momentum's going. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. At, and the, the thing that happened is, like, I feel like a lot of people can relate to this, that grow up in their business. At the end of the day, you're still a child and you're going to grow up and you're going to have growing pains and go through it. And you want to figure out, you know, what you want to do in life. You're going to have different thoughts and process a lot of things differently. So for me, it was just it was great, great. Teenage years started to come in, you know, adolescence. Do I want to do this still? I still want to hang out with friends. I want to do something else. I want to play sports. I want to, you know try other things um and then that kind of got i want to say distracted but you know you just you start to veer off and do other things you want to try other stuff you've been doing something for so long you want to try to switch it up and you know figure out who you are what you want to do and stuff like that so for me personally that's what happened with me growing up um i just kind of started trickling off in other things doing other things figuring it out acting was always still my love i was always still there i always go back i was still auditioning but I wasn't as focused or didn't have as much, you know, right. passion for it at the time of growing up through my teens. Did, and you, did you have been, do you have what you would say enough experience before actually touching set on John Q? Uh, yes and no. I, ha I, had, I had booked enough like television and commercials. So I was on set enough before John Q. But that was my first feature film yeah. set. Filming, uh, going to another country and staying in hotels and all this other stuff. So that and then seeing them build a whole studio set around it, that yeah. was crazy, you know, and then going there every day and like, oh, this is now your home or your set every day, your work it's your office. daily job for the next three months. Yeah, that was a, a different atmosphere and a different um, mindset for me, but took some time getting used to. But. You know, just like anything, you do it enough, you get used to it. Right. I thought it was cool. It was pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you you guys created a timeless classic. Oh, thank and you. it's, uh, I mean, so we, we were just on the plane not that long ago, and it's still on the plane as a, <laughs> as a film for you to be able to watch. Hey, hey, if your film is still on a plane in 2024, so 2025, you know, it's a good thing. That's what that's what signifies something that's timeless. Yes. Or, so, or when somebody calls somebody the GOAT, you know, it's the greatest of all time. It's something that transcends transcends past generations for sure and that's what really creates a timeless you know act or a timeless actual project is something that just you know it's endless it doesn't matter how long or how old it is it's always going to be re you know re-brought to the society somebody's going to watch it somebody's kid kid is going to yeah. watch it and till today you still get still recognize you they tell you yeah, yeah so, <laughs> you know yeah, i got that same oreo jersey by the way i just bought it oh did you? i was gonna wear it Glad you didn't. Yeah, it was a good choice you didn't. Gonna wear like the same size I was wearing in the, because that would have been weird. I don't know, actually. I think I might have ordered You bought a kid's Orioles? I think so. Little Nick, I want it to be authentic. Hey, you, you was going to get some looks, but okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, something so timeless like that, you know, is, is there a sense of pressure that you always feel? Because even still, when you do something so great, it's almost, I think, in the music, even when you get a, you know, one hit wonders. It's always like, oh yeah, well, was that it or what's next? Like, was there a real strong sense of pressure that you had to go over or get over? At one point in my life, there was for sure. It was more so like, all right, don't be a one hit wonder. Don't be the child actor guy. Don't yeah. be this, don't be that. And you know, that's, that's, that's normal. And that's kind of like a compliment because if what I did wasn't so good or timeless, as you say, or you know, forget about it. It just would have been brushed under the rug and been okay. But the fact that it's been held, holding up for this long, it's kind of kudos to me for being part of something like that. And it kind of lets me know that, all right, if that, if I can be a part of something so great at that young age, all I got to do is just continue to put the work in and effort. 
and I'm sure something like that will come in, come along again, and I just got to be prepared for it. But at one point, yeah, it was the, uh, okay, well, what's next? What's next? You got to do something next. Oh, don't be this. Don't be that. Yeah. But with enough time and enough, you know, uh, patience and understanding how life goes, you know, tomorrow could be the next big thing, you know, yeah. or another two, ten, four years, weeks, whatever. Long as you, you know, long as I prepare and, you know, put the work in, everything else is up to God, man. So, okay. so before we move on to the, move on and have some fun with Mike Tup. Yeah. Um, I got to ask, just because I know, I know everybody always wants to ask you, and it's my start question right here. Okay. On my trusty iPhone notepad. <laughs> <laughs> I put okay. all my questions in my notes right here. That's good. Um, I got to ask, and it's just because I know I deal with the same question and people sometimes don't understand it. Yeah. Um, can you call Denzel Washington today? Could I call him? I feel like anybody could call him. Leave Did you me? Have, <laughs> <laughs> when was the premiere? The premiere was 2001, I believe, when I looked it up. Oh, 2002. 2002, yeah. 2002 is when it... No, just... <laughs> Right before, <laughs> actually, he walked the carpet. <laughs> then he left. Didn't even watch the movie. He and dabbed then me up. He, and then just everybody like, said, hey, cool. good job, kid. Yeah. <laughs> hey, how'd you get in, kid? I was like, we, all right, that's cool. Right? Um, you know, because you know what they say. How yeah. come you weren't in another movie with him? How come he didn't? You know, we have all these rumors where like. There's so many. Think, listen, there's so many, so many things who people don't understand in, in any in entertainment There's so industry. many politics that go into it that, you know, there's just so many moving pieces. The industry is like this, too. People don't understand. It's, yeah. it's quick, man, because, you know, money doesn't sleep. And, you know, time, you cannot waste time. Yeah. That's one thing in the business. In any business, I feel people know time is money and you don't waste time and you don't waste money. So with that being said, like um, it just never I, I talked to him a few times, you know, throughout the years after the film and stuff. But, you know, it just never worked out to where he ever did anything again that I could have really been in. I mean, great debaters. I did audition for that. Yeah. But did, there you have so many a, did you have an actual relationship that they want to know? So I got to ask for them. Did you have an actual, any type of friendly or communicative relationship with Denzel at some point? Did you have his phone number? Did my you? my my mother did. Yes. My, my family did. The adults did. Right. I was a child at the end of the day. So, I mean, I, when I would, I would speak to him a few times throughout the years as a child. Just, you know, my yeah. mom would speak to him and I'd see him sometimes at certain events. Hey, hi, and things like that. But at the end of the day, that's a grown man. And, and you know, we did work together. I'm still a child. I'm growing up in industry, so it, we never really crossed paths enough. Yeah. Um, but there was a semi-respectful relationship, not okay. a personal, super tight, buddy, buddy, pick up phone call, talking all the time. Right. But we did see each other. It was, you know, conversations here and there, and it was cool and respectful. All uh, right, yeah. Well, who so, knows? Yeah. Maybe he'll call for John Key too. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going a, I'm to a call him. I'm a, I'm a, it's about time. We'll I'm calling him. We'll find the number somewhere on the yellow yeah. things. Okay, yeah, we'll so cool it. thing about Mic'd Up, it's always fun, is uh, thanks to Ro these amazing microphones that you have in your chest by Rode. Rode Go Wireless Pro Mics. Um, our buddies over there took care of us. So even though this event is extremely noisy, we are here at a sneaker event with the shoe store, with equivalents, with the questions, a quick cleaning. Um, at God con? Soul, it's a this sneaker event. Sneaker event, okay. Yeah, gotcha. You couldn't tell? Yeah, no, nah, I just make sure. So I have, we have a couple more questions Did for you. Did you get the sneakers that I that I'm getting on right now? I've been wanting these for a while. I just want to make sure you get those. Yeah, make sure you get the these these, these are really cool. Solomon's, I'm so, I'm so. They're, so they're nice, nice, they're nice, but. Nice. So, um, we're gonna take you sneaker shopping. Okay. We're gonna enjoy the the event. All right. Um. Remember, you're mic'd up. Cool. So watch your language. These kids watch you. <laughs> um, and for those right. listening and watching, uh, you have all the sound. And thanks to Road Mike, you don't have as much background sound with the music. Uh, it is a noisy event. It's so very noisy. So. Please. For us, you're listening to something completely differently than what we are listening to. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. We are struggling to talk to each other. <laughs> but we're so we have we have a couple more questions for you. All right. We're gonna move on to the next next chapter of the uh, of the interview, and we are gonna take a walk around and enjoy the event while you answer these questions. You ready? You got your good knees with you? I got my good knees today. All right, let's go. Awesome weights. I'll feel good. All right, so we're here. Uh, Obviously, you've been to one of these sneaker events before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've dragged you to enough. Uh, Yes, you got. We used to throw lace them up. Yes, we did. (laughs) So, yeah, we're here. We're going to take a walk around, see if you want to do a little shopping, Uh, see if you're going to get anything that's pretty cool while we ask you a couple questions. Don't steal nothing. I stole something earlier. You should go admit that? That's great. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> That's wild. Um, but so going back to our conversation, you know, you had a huge role as a child actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you're you're a father, correct? I am. What would be your steps as far as putting your ki- your uh, your kids into the entertainment now that you've been there as a child? Would you actually push them through, or would you let them kind of mature and let them decide, make your own decision, wait till they get past the child acting stage, or what? What kind of take would you take differently now as somebody who's been through it as a child actor before and been through this and now has prolonged into an adulthood? Honestly, man, I think it just depends on the kid. Um, You know, if I see as they grow, they start to take a liking to it or they have a passion or, you know, a gift for it like I did. Yeah. Okay. You know, we'll give it a try, but I'm not going to ever pressure it the moment they don't want to do it that's fine you know hey not for them not not your forte let's go over here and try something else you know okay um i'm not against it uh i'm just not necessarily for it either yeah i'm just more so you got to fill it out it's it's a i think it's a case by case you just fill it out is there something that you think you would do differently that maybe your mother did when you were in the industry if your kid did get drive into it as a child actor and if he did book something as big as John Q? I don't know. It's kind of hard, man, because, you know, you're not in, I'm not in that position. Right. You know, so I don't know how I would react, depending on how my mother reacted to me. I mean, she was super excited, and it was a great thing. And, you know, I loved it. So right. she loved it. And so it just made us want to keep doing it and going more. So, uh, you know, if he's, I'm, of course, I'm going to be excited for my kid if they book something. And, you know, yeah. they're excited and they love it. But, you know, what if we get on set and... He's not having the greatest day, you know, or he's like, ah, it's not as fun, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, it makes you feel a certain way, and it's like, all right. So uh, it's kind of one of those things you just, I think my mom did great when I booked it and everything, so I just, I don't know. It'd have to be one of those, I'd have to see it, I guess, and okay. figure it out. See, so you got your Jordan 4 Thunders. Yeah, you know. Is there any shoe that you're looking for right now that we can probably look uh, for? I, I tell you, I want some Bread Imagine 4s. Those, I actually, those are nice. I um, actually won them in the raffle. And um, the app crashed on me. These the fours. These ones right here, yeah. Well, this yeah, is the kid sizes. Kind of, I know. I kind of want these too. These are nice. These are really, really nice. I uh, go up some sixes or some sevens too. I think I saw a bunch of these on somebody's table over there. We can maybe haggle them down to a pair of sizes. Love a good haggle. Love a good haggle. Can't beat a good haggle. We love a good haggle. Are there any shoes that you get that you won't wear? Yeah, shoes that I buy, shoes I buy for the store. My friend that actually just walked in, he's, he's running around looking for this exact shoe. Is it dead stock? Man, how much you want for it? You, you're back into acting classes now, right? Yes. You're pursuing acting again and uh, heavier. Yes, full um, time. Full time is now is acting where you're gonna stop at. They have the military for you. Seen these? But this is the only the kid sizes. They don't have the men's sizes nowhere. Everybody has the kid sizes. No, it looks huge though, doesn't it? Yeah. It's like a nine or an eight. You remember they released these in 2012 with the drum men back? Uh, outside of going back into acting, is there anything else that you're really indulging in, focusing in, taking your effort in, in the entertainment or outside entertainment? Um, other than, you know, just being a dad right now, I'm really into fatherhood and like just, you know, being there for my kids and raising them and watching them grow each and every day. I think that's a great job. I think that's a real cool experience. A uh, fatherhood. What about producing or directing? So, yeah. Or do you want to just, do you want to get back your focus directly into acting first? Um, well, acting will always be my first love and I'll always have my passion. But as I've gotten older, all through life experiences, uh, I'm definitely, I've already, well, I'm in the process of finishing my first official script. 
I'm okay. trying to get that. Uh, I wrote it. I wrote it. You fell. Yeah. Not too bad. How you feel about it? I think I'm good. Not too bad. Only a little bit above box price after I got screwed over. <laughs> I, I won them. I won them on the Foot Locker app for my personal pair. I know. I won them right now. <laughs> but the, but the app pl crashed once I won them. I was so heartbroken. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Thank you, brother. I don't really see nothing too much. Oh, that's fire. That's fire. Awesome. Of course. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. But you said you just finished. Finish writing, writing your script. First script, yeah. Okay, all right. What's it? Is there a can we know the genre? I'm not gonna have you tell the story, but can you Dramedy. tell me? Dramedy. Dramedy. Drama comedy. Drama comedy. Is this a new? I, I I've never didn't know that was a thing, man. I hey. know romance comedy. I hey. know rom coms. I love them. Before. Before. I'm love good rom coms. You coming with the fire? Dramedy. Something new. Drama. So what is that? Is that like somebody starts to cry and then you kind of like crack a laugh? You could crack a laugh and go to a cry. I don't know. It's all over the place. A lot of emotional roller coaster in a good way, though. You know, you're gonna right. you're gonna leave and watching and, it. And is this for a TV show or for a movie? Uh, the best thing about it, it could be it could be both. But okay. I would like it to be a feature film. Like right, your feature film for the ones who are watching it back at home and who aspire to write. What? If, how many pages would you say a feature film typically is? Uh, it depends. Man. Um, there's, I mean, if it's a short feature film, you can go. As little as 90 to 100 page. If it's right. like, uh, you know, a Titanic, you got about a 300 page or 250 page. True story. I think I think that's the only time they really don't care how many pages it is if it's based on a true story. True. Because you do have to tell the story, right? You do have to tell the story. But, I mean, that's what editing is for and cutting and, you know. There's, there's, a, there's a movie that's based on a true story. It's not the Titanic. I have to look it up. But they might know in the comments to tell me. But I think there's one or two of them that they filmed so much footage that they can actually actually make three different versions of the movie. I would definitely believe that. Yeah. I would believe that's very true. And the movie's only like an hour and a half long. Yeah. And if they put they have in like, there, it's probably they have four like hours. seven hours worth of fucking footage. Yeah. Seven hours of footage. Yeah. So that's uh that's that's very believable. Or you'd be surprised how much stuff doesn't actually make the actual movie and how much right. they film. So What's something very, very important that you felt you needed to understand to really enter fatherhood properly? Patience is a very, very, very big thing. Patience. Because uh, kids will definitely test it. Okay. Love, love is very powerful, man. You got to, love will get you through some tough days. Just remember, you know, at the end of the day, they're you, a little version of you, a big piece of you. Yeah, just patience and love, man. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Just remember they're you. At the end of the day, they're a little you. The little mini yous, the okay. Mini yous, you know? So you love yourself, you love them, you'll be all right, man. Okay, yeah, I can see that. Now, what, what type of advice would you give somebody who wants to be an actor or put their kid into acting? Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only advice I can give, honestly, is just if you, you know, if you're a parent, make sure your kid wants to do it and understands what it is and everything. Don't ever force anybody or anything uh, because if it's not genuine, if they don't want to do it, you're just wasting everybody's time. Right. I think you get those child actors that end up quitting. Yeah. Because they never wanted to do it in the first place. Exactly. Or, you know, you could take, they, maybe they do want to do it, but then it becomes, as a child, it's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to enjoy it. It's supposed to want to do it. But once it becomes work or pressure on it or trying to make money from it and do this, yeah, a child, you know, we have laws against that. There's a reason children can't work, if you make right. sense. So if it, you know, if it starts to feel like work, then that's a problem. But if it's still- Especially as a child. As a yeah. child, all you want to do is have fun. You really, you know, they always say, uh, I think one of the biggest thing they said that was tough with understanding uh, Michael Jackson's mentality was that he never had a childhood. So they said, his entire adulthood, a lot of people um, called him weird, but what, psychologic, psychologically, psychologists were saying that he was actually in search of a childhood the moment he had enough freedom as an adult to do whatever he wanted. So yep. you don't want to take away, you don't want to take the, the innocence of being a child just for work. You don't, day. you don't. You want to, work is supposed to be fun. I mean, even as adults, we say our dream job, we yeah, want to do things passion. that makes you know, us happy and all that. 
So it's the same for them. They got this furry jacket if you want a furry jacket. It's about to get warm outside, I feel like. I don't need a furry jacket. Or if jacket. you wear nothing underneath it, no longer that warm. Yeah, then it's just fur on skin, and that just, with, with warmth, I don't think that's a good idea. All right, so we did a little shopping. Yeah. Uh, we did some experience. You got your shoes? I got my shoes. Some shoes. Um, you got some good shoes, size 10 and a half. Nice. Um, sometimes I'm going to have to. You're a 10 and a half, too? shoes, man. Appreciate that. Birthday gift. Birthday? Yeah. Anyway, you were saying? Oh, I actually do have your birthday gift. I, I have know, to I give see. To you. Let's go. Um, anyways, guy. following up to my last question, the type of setting that Adam Sandler has set up for every movie is just him and his friends, down to the staff. Um, how do you believe, Is there, do you think that might be the hack into a continued successful career as an actor or in the entertainment? to team up with those closest to you or how do you feel about that uh i feel like it depends on the situation because i mean there's more than just one actor in the world right right there's plenty of actors successful actors and things like that uh not every successful actor works with their closest friends or family uh, i think it just depends on your people that you have if that's like for example adam sandler he was friends and made friends with a lot of people when he came out here in the industry and they all came up together and they worked together and jailed together and it just kind of works in a way. You know, Kevin Hart's kind of like that with his people, you know, he has, you know, his own production company and people and things like that. I think that it depends on the people, it depends on the group of people you have, what they want to do. A lot of people have different hopes and dreams and visions and things like that. But if it all comes together and all can work, I'd love it. I think it's a great idea. I mean, you work with people, strangers, you know, that you don't know. That and they become, your, they friends. become your friends and family so over time. So why can't you start it as friends, right? Exactly. So it I just agree. depends on, you know, case by case situation. If your friends are people that want to do it and if it all works out and if it, if you can do it. So I'm definitely open to the idea. I think it's just whether or not it can work or not. I mean, it's, I think it's a great idea too. I think it's possible. Yeah. It makes a huge difference in everything that you do. Yeah. Um, and, and two heads are always better than one. Yes, very true. So especially when they're like minded. So very I true. can see I it can makes see things that easier. Makes things a lot easier, yes. I guess. Somebody actually recently just actually shared some news with me actually before we wrap up. Oh, okay. They actually reached out to me uh -huh. with an investment opportunity for you. According to Google, your net worth is uh seven million dollars. What year was that? That was this year? 2024 this year. Man. Google $7 million. So I guess the cat's out the bag. Uh, <laughs> what they didn't report yet is uh, I went to Vegas two weeks ago and uh, boy, boy, you know. Uh, What'd you play? Listen, stay in school. Don't go to Vegas when you got a $7 million net worth. Google me in a few weeks and, uh, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll be in the same boat, but, uh, and we're not going to put your finances out there, but being a traditional actor who was entered into the industry before the entrance. Yeah. Yeah. And now reintroducing yourself. How do you feel about the type of methods and the type of roles that can be taken? to actually getting the job he wants in the industry now. Because now we have people doing social media, attempting, without actually even taking a single acting class, yeah. attempting to go from having a million followers onto the big screen. You have people producing and paying for their own things. You have people taking a, a, a cell phone camera and trying to upload it to Tubi. <laughs> um, you have everybody and anybody who actually doesn't, you know, didn't, may not have put enough years, but are out there willing and trying. Um, and somebody who the traditional route was auditioning, auditioning class, auditioning, getting booked and getting lucky. Oh, uh, how do you feel about it right now? And how do you feel about attacking it at this moment? Uh, I don't, I'm not, I am a traditional actor, but I don't, I don't have any icks for, uh, <laughs> or, uh, you don't have yeah. a link. I don't have any icks towards, you know, influencers or social My media. My phone doesn't even like that word. <laughs> um, you know, it's get it how you live, you know? Yeah. I'm not ever going to knock anyone's hustle as long as you're not disrespecting somebody or putting other people down or, 
you know, derogatory, anything like that. I'm not going to knock your hustle. Everybody has their lane and their thing that works for them. And if it works for you, more power to you. You know, as if I, it's always been a popularity contest in a sense that, you know, if you do good as an actor and you do a movie. If you're Tom Cruise, you Mission Impossible, the first one, they're on like nine now or eight. But if he wasn't great in the first one, I don't think we'd be going this far, you know? So he's that guy. He looks good in what he does. And, you know, actors and actresses, if they look good in what they do and they perform well, people flock to it. It's a natural thing. You want to see more of them. You want to see this and that. So, you know, as far as like influencers or TikTokers or social media, you got a million followers, two million followers, and then you want to be put in a movie because those two million followers come see you. Great. I get it. You can, you know, it's going to bring in the crowd. But my only my only thing I would say is if you are going to do that, just out of respect, and I'm sure the studios or whoever hired Titles in the craft. Just please. just put a little work into the put craft. You don't gotta be, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, Academy Award winner. Just put a little put a little effort into it. And so when they go to see it, it's like, okay, well, respect. That's yeah. all. Okay. That's all. All right, well, we'll wrap that up. Again, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for coming again. My no brother, problem, you know, brother, I love thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, we just did a good shopping. Every time we wrap up, it, it, uh, mic up, we always have a couple of gifts. For our guest. See mine over there. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. It's my guy. It's my gift right there. Yeah, so, we just slide. We have the Cristiano bottle for you. We have a brand yes, new one on their way out. Hey, appreciate you know, it. I know you can't drink it right now. Hey, April. Um, it's going crazy though. April's gonna go crazy. Yeah. Uh we have a quick cleaner. Hey, I need uh, that. It's quickclean.com. Keep your shoes fresh. Fresh Open shoes. Oil base, 100 percent organic, safe on okay. every type of material. Uh, nice, nice. And actually, I'm gonna ask you, yeah. four or six. Four or six? Six. 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 Six? Six. 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 That's right. a lot of sixes. I'll, I'll, be, like I'll be, right, be right back. You said six. It said six. So these are for you. Compliments of equivalence. At equivalence.com. Oh, what? Some sparkly Nah, wine. nah, son. Infrared sixes. Nah, son. Can I open this? Yeah, you open it. Nah, we son. We keep them in there because you know they're icy, so you got to keep them icy. Oh, <laughs> Damn, should have said four. Should have said four. No, actually, actually, I wanted to say. Should have said four. four. These are mine now. Damn, I'll get them later. Woo, look how icy these are, baby. Damn. Compliments of Equivalence. Yo, hey, shout out Equivalence. You know, you need you your sneakers, shop. anything. In Encino, Encino, 1-8-0-0-7 Metro Boulevard. You know what it is. Encino, California, at, at Equivalence. Ooh. Equivalence, that's E Q U V. A L E N C E dot com. What he said. Gang, Thank gang. you guys for tuning in hey, to Mike Up again. I've been Mike Up with Daniel. This is Mike Angelo. Until next time.